Hey, this is Dan from DIY, and today we'll be building and installing this gliding pot and pan hanger. It makes it super easy to get a pan out without struggling with the other ones. It's a really simple design, and we'll be showing you exactly how to make it. This project is made entirely from 3 quarter inch and 1 half inch scrap wood lying around in our shop. A lot of the cutting that you'll see us doing is us breaking down the wood to the proper size so they fit our plans. If you're planning on making this, we have a free set of detailed plans and a sketchup file for the project linked down in the description right under the like button. The plans have the dimensions for all the parts and explain what you might have to modify to get the hanger to fit your cabinet. Before continuing any further with this, let's quickly jump into that SketchUp file to help explain the build. The pot hanger is made up of two main parts, the sliding piece on the inside and the cover on the outside. The two parts are held together with a set of glides. The hanger is designed to fit a standard 24 inch cabinet, but can easily be modified to fit whatever cabinet size you're working with just by changing the length of some of the parts. The hanger is screwed directly into the top of the cabinet in the front and is screwed into a separate support piece in the back. This is the hanger breaking up into its core parts. The two main sliding parts can easily be detached from each other and are constructed with wood pieces that are screwed together. So back to the shop, we're cutting up those pieces from our scrap wood. We first ripped everything down to their proper width on the table saw. As you can see here, we're cutting up the side pieces from a wider 3 quarter inch thick board. Here we're cutting the center sliding piece from a 2x4. Now we're cutting the top piece from another 3 quarter inch thick board. Then we use the crosscut slide and cut everything to the proper length. We then sort of dry assembled everything just to see how it would end up looking and to make sure we hadn't messed anything up. Then we started sanding everything smooth. We started at 80 grit sandpaper and worked our way up to 220 grit sandpaper using our orbital sander. After that we applied 3 coats of sand oil based polyurethane, sanding lightly between each coat. We then add the glides to the center and side pieces, screwing them in with half inch screws. We made sure to pre drill our holes and keep the glides aligned. After testing to make sure the glides move smoothly, we attach the top piece on the hanger, making sure to pre-drill and countersink our screws. We then drilled and marked holes spaced 2 inches apart for the hooks to screw into.
However, with that much spacing, we were only up to fit 5 hooks. We wanted more hooks, so we changed the spacing to every 1.5 inches. We were then able to fit 7 hooks. After this, it was time to install the front pull piece. We wanted to make sure that those nails or screws would be visible, so we chose to attach the piece using dowels. To do this, we didn't use any jigs. We just measured and made corresponding marks on both pieces before drilling quarter inch holes to accept the dowels. At first we were only planning on using one dowel to secure the pull piece. We then realized that using only one dowel could result in the front pull twisting off in the future. To prevent this, we drilled and installed a second dowel underneath to create a stronger joint. We then applied a whole bunch of glue, both to the dowels and the surfaces. Then we clamped everything tight, making sure to wipe off all the extra squeeze out while it was still wet. We then tested it out to make sure everything was working smoothly, then went to the cabinet to start installing the hanger. We emptied the cabinet, including the shelving, then marked the center at the front and back sides of the cabinet. We also measured the distance from the bottom of the cabinet to the bottom of the face frame then transferred that measurement to the back side. This ensures that the hanger will be mounted level. We then drew a line 2 and 3 quarters inch lower, which is the height of the hanger. After that, we marked the center of the support piece. We then drilled and screwed it into the cabinet's back panel, making sure to align it with the markings properly. We then set the hanger on the wooden support piece and drilled and screwed it into the face frame using 2 inch screws. Additionally, we added a screw going into the support block to prevent the hanger from lifting off of it. At this point, we could slide in the middle sliding piece and test everything out. With that done, the project is mostly complete. We chose to add our maker marks to the hanger, using a soldering iron to burn it in. This is the first time we've done anything like this, so we first attached a paper template to follow. We went over it at first super lightly, then came back to darken everything up. With that out of the way, the project was fully completed. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and to subscribe, and we'll see you all on the next one.